What's going on everyone, welcome back to another video. If you don't know who I am, that means you're new. I'm Mark, what's good with y'all? Go check out my other videos, check them out, check them out. But first, stay on this one. So, it's been a little bit since, you know, I've done one of these videos, so I might as well get it out the way, you know what I mean? I say that like it's a bad thing, it's not a bad thing. I enjoy doing these videos personally. But regardless, this is three handguns that are better for home defense than concealed carry part three. Oh, let me just adjust this light real quick. There we are. My bad. Should have been more prepared before I hit record. But you know what? That's the way she goes. So, for starters, we're going to start off with the Ruger 5.7. <clears throat> or some people call it the Ruger 57. I don't know why some people call it the Ruger 57. Personally, I call it the Ruger 5.7 because of the fact that it's chambered in 5.7 by 28 millimeter. So, if you don't know much about the 5.7 round... What you will know is simply that it is a solidly low recoil round and you get a pretty good capacity out of all firearms that has been chambered in I've seen. I can't think of too many firearms that are chambered in 5.7 by 28 or excuse me, 5.7 by 28 that are not, you know, that, that have a bad capacity. So we can start with that. The Ruger 5.7's capacity is 20 plus one in the chamber of a low recoil round and here's the difference some people like to argue oh well where do you make the distinction of a low recoil round like you know the 5.7 by 28 millimeter round and 22 lr that's also a low recoil round well the difference is is that 5.7 by 28 millimeter wasn't made for hunting small game that, that, it's just not what it was made for 22 lr was 22 LR is made for hunting things like rabbits and squirrels and whatnot. So <clears throat> that's where I make a distinction, generally speaking, is what their purpose originally was for, and not to mention, ballistically speaking, what they actually do. So, I mean, you get you get a rail on it. I mean, I know one of my issues with the Ruger 5.7 personally is that there are some slide cuts, and if you guys have seen my videos on slide cuts, I am not a big fan of them personally. However, you know, there are some... There are some exceptions to the rule, of course, you know what I mean? Like if you're trying to get a competition gun, you more likely than not are going to want to have slide cuts on it. But that's besides the point. I'm, I'm getting off topic here. Although being a low recoil round, the 5.7 by 28 millimeter round will do a solid job of defending yourself. I, I would argue, you know, not as good as like 9 millimeter in my opinion. However, what I would argue is it's comparable to 22 Magnum, which I'm actually going to get into a 22 Magnum handgun in just a minute. But if you haven't seen my video on the 5.7 by 28 millimeter round, I actually did a whole video, so I'm not going to sit here and keep going into too much about the caliber itself. However, with the Ruger 5.7 having a uh, excuse me having a 20 round plus one in the chamber capacity, that is a big deal. I, I mean, I I bet you money right now. That if somebody is sitting there breaking into your home and you're letting off 21 rounds at them, chances are they're going to be gone. That There's a pretty good chance of that. Now, one of the reasons why I argue it's a lot better for home defense than concealed carry simply is just because of its size. I mean, I I personally have held it, you know, a Ruger 5.7. It's, it's not a small gun. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And you got to think about it like this. To get a capacity of 20 rounds, it, you are at the bare minimum going to at least it was either Smith and Wesson who or PSA who dropped a compact 57 that had 20 rounds as the magazine capacity but my whole point is that bare minimum you're getting a compact grip but with the Ruger 57 it's a full size handgun it is a it is it's not a small gun it's not going to be the easiest for you to conceal carry uh, some people might try to argue bag carry, but at that point, I like to argue what's the purpose of that. You know what I mean? If you're carrying it on, you know, like your backpack or something that that just kind of doesn't make it useless, but it makes it a lot more difficult on yourself. So overall, for concealed carry, the Ruger 5.7 really just isn't going to be your best bet. It's, yeah, it's just not going to be it, personally. Too big of a gun. I mean, it has a lot of cool features on it, but with too big of a gun is not really going to be, it can, I mean, it can be done. Don't get me wrong. It can be done. It's just not your best bet. Moving on though, as I mentioned before, I'm 
We're going to be talking about a firearm that's chambered in 22 Magnum, which is the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 Magnum. Now, this firearm was released not super, super long ago. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken on this one, the capacity is like 30 plus one which is a phenomenal capacity. That's the standard capacity. Uh, and once again, that's if I'm not mistaken, but I'm pretty sure last time, last time I was doing research on it, that was one of the reasons why I really wanted it was because of the capacity. If I'm mistaken, please correct me in the comments down below. But moving on, a 30 plus one capacity. 22 Magnum, I like to make the same difference, you know, between 22 Magnum and 22 LR, considering that 22 Magnum can take down a, a larger being than a just a rabbit or a squirrel. Uh, as a matter of fact, the 22 Magnum is comparable to the 5.7 by 28 millimeter round. So let that just speak for itself. Now, I'm not going to sit here and harp on, you know, just the round itself. My point is that with Smith & Wesson, already extremely reliable company. Everybody already knows that. Uh, it is a decently sized gun, once again. This is something that you're going to see as a obviously very common theme amongst this little series that I'm doing here, is that these firearms that I'm recommending for home defense over concealed carry, a great reason to do with it is simply because of the size of it. It has nothing to do with the reliability of it. It has nothing to do with the caliber it's in. It has nothing to do with really anything other than the size it's in and what you would get out of it as somebody who's trying to conceal carry it, which if you're carrying such a big firearm that it's uncomfortable for you, you're not really getting much out of it. <sighs> With the capacity it has, would it be, you know, would it be cool to conceal carry? Absolutely. No, no doubt about it. You know what I mean? But is it optimal for concealed carry being the size it is, as it is a full size gun and you got to think about it, guys. This is something not a lot of people understand is while, yes, you know, 30 rounds is a, you know, solid capacity. Obviously, it's not going to, you know, equate to like 30 rounds of nine millimeter, I mean, ballistically speaking, and, you know, when it comes to size and weight. But my whole point is simply that while, yes, the 22 Magnum rounds are smaller, which, you know, having 30 in there makes it easier to do, it still is a full size gun. So it's not going to be the easiest for you to conceal carry. Now, moving on, you know, I've been talking about some, you know, some, I guess some could say lower end guns, you know, especially compared to this one. Uh, this gun is on, actually, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 Magnum is also on my list of guns to get eventually, but much further up on that list. And when I do get this gun, it's going to be a long while before I do. All right. You guys can understand once I say what it is, but when I do get this gun, whoo wee oh yeah, I'm going to be a happy man. So, the Staccato P. See, I'm just smiling sitting here talking about it. Staccato, uh, geez, I can English. <laughs> the Staccato P is one of the most buttery smooth handguns pretty much in existence. Now, notice how I said one of, because I'm sure some of y'all are going to be like, well, you know, I actually spent like $8,000 on this 2011 instead, and it's, you know, whatever. The, the Staccato P is going to run you around $2,500 before taxes. Before taxes. So that itself is a good reason why I personally wouldn't want to conceal carry it. <laughs> All right, cool. Sometimes the microphone has been dying on me, so I'm just double checking. But my whole point is that <clears throat> for the cost of what the Staccato P is, I, I, that itself is a reason for me to not conceal carry it. Some people would argue, oh, well, then why would you make that argument to use it for home defense? In a majority of home defense situations, it tends to be more clear cut, right or wrong type thing. Concealed carry, there's a lot more variables that take place. It takes, from what I've seen at least, a good amount of a good amount further of time i can english she's <laughs> a good amount more time to you know get all the details together get everything situated and even if you acted in self-defense get your firearm back too then it would be for home defense there are some situations where it is such a clear-cut case of home defense some people literally don't even see the county jail so now that is besides the point the staccato p being a 
full size nine millimeter gun. I believe the capacity is, I could be mistaken. It's either, it's somewhere between 17 and 19. Uh, I'm also pretty sure it just depends on which magazines you get because there are certain magazines that have extended base plates, whatever. I'm getting off topic here. <clears throat> While being one of the smoothest handguns in existence, the chances I would ever conceal carry this is like nothing. Nothing. There is a negative percent chance I would conceal carry that gun. Why is that? Does it, you know, have to do with reliability? No, it has nothing to do with reliability. The Staccato P is actually a duty pistol. Uh, but the cost it would be, I'm not going to lie, that would be too much of a heartbreak in my opinion. That would hurt me too much. Emotionally, that would hurt me a lot. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of y'all can agree with me on that one too. Would I use it for home defense, though? I mean, yeah. Uh, look, when it comes to reliability, it's not like that changes for home defense or concealed carry. However, it being a full-size 9mm, it's going to be you know easier to use in home defense than it is for you to conceal carry all day, obviously. But the price point itself makes such a huge difference compared to the other guns because the Ruger 5.7, you can... You can generally find for seven, eight hundred dollars. Sometimes, if you're at like a pawn shop that's overcharging you, maybe nine or more. Uh, I believe it's similar pricing as well for the Smith and Wesson M&P 22 Magnum, if not a less. Which you know, that's amazing. But <clears throat> you know, compare those to the Staccato P. I can buy the Ruger 5.7 and the Smith and Wesson M&P 22 Magnum both, and still have money to buy a ton of ammo left over for them which really speaks volumes because it's not like both of those calibers are the most common calibers to find. Like, let that speak for itself. I could buy both of them and still buy a ton of ammo just for the cost of the Staccato P. So yeah, that price point itself completely tells me, no, there's no chance that I'm going to take this gun out and about with me as my concealed carry gun, risk a situation happening where now the police have my $2,500 gun and that's without taxes. Keep in mind, guys. And dude, taxes are expensive, man. So we're looking at probably like, I don't know, 26 and change. You're looking close to maybe $2,750 that you spent on this gun, realistically speaking. When we're talking taxes, shipping, unless you're at a gun store that happens to have it. Uh, you know, if you're like me, shipping protection, you know, the background check, see what I mean? The, the transfer fee itself. There's so much when it comes, you know, to ordering something that expensive that it really does add up. And I personally would feel pretty pissed off if I lost $2,750 when it came to that. $2,750? Yeah. $2,750. You, yeah, I'm going to be mad about that. So just the price point itself is my biggest reason why I would not conceal carry it. I know I've been kind of going in circles on that one. However, that is something I cannot stress enough. With that being said, I think that about wraps it up for this video. Uh, that's another three guns right there for y'all that are definitely going to be much better for home defense than concealed carry. If any of y'all disagree, make sure to comment it down below. Other than that, y'all make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that bell. When you hit that bell, hit all. And because you agree with me, honestly, if you don't agree with me and you think that these three firearms I listed are much better for concealed carry than home defense, I really do want to hear why. But regardless of whether you agree with me or if you don't agree with me, make sure to check out all my other videos. Y'all make sure to stay legal, stay safe, stay dangerous. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.